Hey guys, I am back home and this is my... What is this? This is my makeshift YouTube slash editing room. I'm trying to make something of a background, but obviously my big fat head is in the way. I'm gonna try and do a whole wall back here and just have random stuff on it, like interesting shit that's better than looking at a blank wall and if you get bored looking at my face there's something else to look at. So I'm just back from Mackay and if you guys follow me on Instagram I'll put the link below. Um, you would have seen that I did a few repairs while I was there. I'll just sort of make a disclaimer like I do in most of my mechanic in videos that I don't know everything and not everything that I do is the correct way of doing it or the way that I recommend for other people to do it. These aren't really like you tutorial type videos because I do watch a lot of those on YouTube and I recommend watching those if you actually want to know how to do things properly. Mine's more just a, this is me fixing my car. I've also had a lot of questions from people saying, why do you keep breaking CVs? They go, oh, it's a Land Cruiser thing to break CVs. I've had my Land Cruiser for eight years and I've never broken CVs before. And people go, oh, is it because you're 35s? Technically, if I had 33s, it wouldn't have a problem. But then again, if I had 35s, and two inch more lift, I wouldn't have a problem either. So it's not necessarily that the bigger tires are destroying the CVs, it's the space between my guard and my wheel is not enough. So if I had 33s and two inches less lift, like if I took my extended shackles out, I would still be breaking the CV in the same way that I broke my last one. The first one was worn. It wasn't broken visibly in any way. It was just noisy. It was probably one of the factory ones, or if not, it was at least eight years old. <laughs> I have done hard four driving, especially before I put my locker in. I was relying a lot on bounce to get me up and over things, where now I sort of go a bit slower because I have a locker and it'll pull me up. So it, it's definitely not had an easy life, that original CV, and it, it lasted at least eight years. Like, that's assuming that it was changed the day I picked the car up, which obviously it wasn't. It was a company vehicle, which I doubt they ever would have changed a CV. That's pretty rare. So that one lasted a while. The second one broke because my tire on up travel wedged in my guard. So the CV shaft that comes off the actual CV stopped turning because my wheel was stuck physically in the guard but the axle which goes into the CV was still turning. So I was flexing and I got to a point where I felt my wheel get stuck and I hopped out and I looked and I'll put this photo up so you guys can see. This is the point where I stopped. Okay, the left hand wheel was still on the ground, the right one was wedged up. It wasn't a big step, it was quite flexed. And so I hopped back in the car and I slowly drove in low range, in first gear, slowly, and then I just heard bang. It wasn't a loud bang, that's why I originally thought it might have been my freewheeling hub. Yeah, so I heard the bang, crap, what was that? And I just reversed out and went home. For everyone who's saying, oh, you're hard on the gear, or you're thrashing your car, or you're going too fast, or like all that bullshit, no. <laughs> I'm the slowest nana off-road. I'm over the days of bashing my car up and over shit. There's, there's no point to it. I, you don't need to when you have a capable car. It was literally the fact if you have one thing turning and the other hand isn't turning, something's going to snap. And it makes sense that the outside casing snapped because that would have just taken all of that torque. It had to go somewhere and it went through the outside. <laughs> I'm just about to do my CV replacement. I'm gonna try and do this video with minimalistic tools. So it's, it's as if you were to do it at home. You don't need to go and buy fancy tools and have all these specialist tooling. When I normally do it in a workshop, obviously I have a hoist, I have access to compressed air. You've got all the correct tooling for what you need. But before that, when I first started doing this, I always had basic tools. This is just ways to do things when you don't have the right tool. Having the right tool is good because you're 
decreasing the risk of damage but you know if you don't have the tool and you got to get something done <laughs> you got to get something done the wheel off and sticking with the using minimalist tooling got the factory Toyota jack we're on the grass today and it's pretty wet because it's been raining so you don't really want to have the jack sinking into the ground the block of wood works as a stable base probably recommend putting a block under the back but my handbrake works pretty well that's always good here's the bucket that I bought with me Trying to keep everything minimalistic i know i said you don't need specialist tools but these are the two tools if you're going to get any that I recommend. 54mm hub nut socket is for land cruisers. I'm pretty sure patrols are a 55. And these circlip pliers. There is a way to do the circlip without these, but it's not fun. Hammer. A lot of people are gonna hate me for what I use this for, but I've always done it that way and I've always used hammer. Um, zip ties, that'll come apparent when I get there. A pick, but you know, you can find your way around with it using a pick. Live without this bolt. I'm hoping this is the right size bolt. It goes into the end of the sh uh, drive shaft and helps you pull it forward. You can put the circlip back in. I've got grease, so I'm just using Penrite because that's what's in there at the moment. I don't really like mixing different greases. The CV comes packed, but I will repack the bearings, even though I just did them a few weeks ago, and I'll repack some into the hub as well. Yeah, so I ended up getting a toolkit for Christmas, so I won't be using the sockets that I bought, but again, you don't need a big fancy socket set or anything like that. Just, I'll tell you what sizes you need, and if you've got those lying around somewhere, that will do. Oh, yes. So step one, removing this freewheeling hub outer. So they're 10 mil. Alrighty, so then that bad boy just comes off and that is how you lock in your hubs. Don't pull these apart. They're not fun to put back together. I made the mistake of doing that once to clean it. The stir clip is just in there. So that is the C-clip. As you can see it has the flat edges and there's no pin to use normal circlips. If it's really stretched just with a hammer, normally put on a vise and just hit on the top and it usually closes that gap. Yeah, you can screw a bolt in and as you can see I have a bit of play. Wow, it's like I've done this before. So you don't want to take these ones all the way off because you're going to have cone washers flying all around the place. There's chickens everywhere. <laughs> you guys can't see but there's a chicken like right beside the camera. Don't touch my camera. Yeah, so just get these like to the edge but not to the point where they're going to come off. Get away, Mr. Chicken. These nuts I've just taken to the edge of the thread and there's a washer in between which is that one there but then there's a cone washer that sits in a tapered like in the tapered housing that you need to get out point of controversy a lot of people say don't hit your housing blah blah blah, blah hit the end of the stud blah blah blah, blah. but look i'm gonna hit the housing have a drift um that's probably the better way to do it and you can just hit the end of the end of the stud and they should pop out. You need to shock it out pretty much. That's really the only way you get it out. You're not going to pick it out or anything like that. They'll just pop out. So that's the cone washer there at the back. If you don't leave these nuts on, they go like flying in a different direction. So we'll take those off then that should just come straight off like that oh mr chicken don't eat the <laughs> they put grease on you don't eat it that was silly this time on denny's farm so now we're going to take this nut off and that's why we have our hub nut socket seeing people do it without they chisel a groove into one of the sides and just put a uh, punch in there and hit 
and it'll slowly work its way, way around, but, like, that's desperate. You can just use a breaker bar or anything along those lines, but it shouldn't be that tight unless they've been on their faders or been seized with water or something crazy like that. That is your retaining nut for the bearings. This is another tool that is a bit odd, but it is handy. If you get a kit, they'll come with these as well, but I just reuse them and you just hammer down, obviously, the tabs that you've curled over when you last did it. So I'll have to bend that one over and flatten it out. Um, if you have a vise, again, hit it on that. So many animals. One that you set all your preload with, that was a bit loose. So that is your sec. This is what I have to pick for. Stop. Oh, I'm here. This one has seen better days. So that's the surface that your bearing sits against. The little tab that sits in the keyway went away. <laughs> Ah, so I had to get a new one and I had to buy it by itself, which is a bit annoying. And that is your bearing out. It doesn't look too badly. Saying that, I hadn't changed in that longer. <laughs> which is just sad. You can just sort of see a bit of wear on the inside there. This can just be caused from getting hot or getting oil in there. So many flies. Other than that, it's not too bad. So we're gonna repack them with the Penrite grease that I had before. And if I were again, if I was at the workshop, I would use the bearing packer, but we're gonna do it by hand today. The only difficult part about only jacking up one side of the car is I can't turn the wheel and move this side out, which gives you a lot more room. I did these up with a rattle gun, so. I don't recommend this, but desperate times. But obviously it's quite short and I only have the long for this size ratchet. So this is just a breaker bar with a socket on the end and now you've got more leverage. So before you get too far with that, we're gonna make a hanger so that we don't have to take the brake lines out saves re-bleeding the brakes, saves a whole lot of messing around. Have these zip ties, join a few together. Die. The rubber brake line, um, and it goes into the joiner, which then becomes a metal brake line. And it curves around and sits in here. A lot of people cringe when I bend this out this way. I would recommend disconnecting. Obviously I'm putting a lot of stress on all of these bends by bending this more, but each to their own. This is not the way to do things, it's just the way I do things. <laughs> so now we should be able to take off the whole assembly. <laughs> this is the same process you would need to do if you were changing your rotors or the hub assembly or your bearings or swivel hub. So if you're doing a bearing replacement, you would it would come with this outer seal or inner seal, sorry. To tap that one out and then tap the new one in so that it's flush. Don't put this seal in until you put the bearing in. Because that's funny. Also, when you do bearings, you're obviously gonna do your races. Ungreased part in there, that's the race. Normally you knock those out when you replace your bearings. Um, they have little grooves that you hit so that they fall out. I'll have a seating service so it'll make a different sound when you're hitting it. You'll know when it's home but Ooh, that one was a bit loose okay. right. so yes yeah, so that's the seal on the inside not that way oh my god 
bad ones. Alright, that's better. Alright, so lift this one up. Put it over. And then put your zip tie on. Alright, so those zip ties are just there so that can't fall. This stub axle is separate so it can move and obviously slide up and down the axle. And that's how you lift that up and over. You want to try and protect, obviously, this brake line, but it's a bit more flexible. And this metal one, you don't want to be bending that too much and the sippy tie just stops it if the caliper's going to go anywhere. But that keeps it out of the way. If you really want it out of the way, you can obviously disconnect the brake line um, or you can take this cover off if you're going to be doing seals, which are on the back of the housing and kingpins and whatnot. Once you got the caliper out of the way, you can... <laughs> My CV is annihilated. Moment of truth. My last CV was worn. There was no obvious damage. There was really clunky, no, no cracks, no... I cleaned it out as much as I could and I couldn't see anything gonna put that one down too they were just worn so technically this is the first CV that I've actually broken and it's quite magnificent if you're gonna break a CV I feel like this is the only way to do it damn son don't do things by halves that is so so bad please all come out I'm impressed that is solid all the way through it's like all the way then we came up the other side oh there's no oil in there that's good means the seal is still good so I'm going to put some more grease in repack the bearings and get a beer because it is well past beer time This one is the more expensive brand, so this one's Repco and this is GSP. Yeah, so this one's build quality doesn't look as good, like that concerns me. At least GSP looks nicer. Nice doesn't mean much at all. <laughs> we will pack this bearing. Alright, so you're just working your way around. Big blob on your hand until you see those little dimples come out. No hands and march flies. Dangerous combination. Greased up. We just put that back over there. Oh, pillowcases make the best rags because when they get dirty, you can just turn them inside out. So I put grease in here and then I put grease inside of here. Try and line up the splines of the diff. Oh. There we go. Oh my god, look at this. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've just put all these back together and just double check them. So pre-packed out of bearing, then go back in. This is one of the talking points, everyone has something different. 
and everything will be different for every single car, it matters how warm things are, but it's about 60. Pick it up, spin it. Fold over. Yep, so probably fold that top one over because it's on the flat edge of the nut. Everything so far, like most of the bolts, I think are under 100. It's only the caliper bolts which are 100 and something. And this one is a locking nut, so it is made to lock, but you've got to make sure you can fold one of the tabs over. Nicely on top there. Hold this one forwards. It's very hard to do with the camera between your legs. Pretty much done. down this gravel hopefully you guys can see and see if there's any weird noises and if we have all wheel drive 